for women in heart disease, we've seen an inc improvement in the awareness that heart disease is the number one killer of women. I think women are being more aggressive at getting screening. I think they're paying attention to their symptoms more, which is a good thing. And hopefully overall, we'll continue to see a decline in mortality in both men and women with um, heart disease. I can't tell you how much the imaging world has improved over the last 10 years. We can look at the heart in so many different ways. Use of um, coronary CTAs. I mean, really, we can look at the heart arteries actually probably a little bit better than we can with a traditional heart catheterization with um, coronary CTAs. I think we've seen market improvements in preventative medications. You know, the advent of statins has been about, you know, really has progressed significantly over the last 10 years. And statin medications are now our best preventative medicine in cardiology. If you just look at the uh, diagnostic, the treatment of heart attacks, the um, treatment of heart failure, we've made marked progression in the last, well, 20, 10 years. Um, so it's been an exciting time. From the electrophysiology standpoint, you know, we've had a lot of advances there in terms of treatment and diagnosis of our patients. Not necessarily just for women, uh, but you know, in the last 10 years I've seen the, uh, the uh, development of an MRI compatible pacemaker. And this has really helped, especially in our patients who have other chronic conditions like cancer or joint disease so they can still not be um, closed out to any kind of therapy. We have new ways to do ablations. We can use freezing instead of burning. I think our ablations in general are safer now with our new technology as opposed to before. We at KU actually utilize something called Mediguide technology which decreases the amount of radiation that we uh, give to our patients and give to ourselves to be honest. I think this is a very important thing as we find out how much medical radiation affects patients down the road, not necessarily today or tomorrow or six months from now, but we're talking 10, 20 years. As we start treating these patients earlier, they're seeing us at a younger age. We don't want the cumulative effects of radiation to affect them later in life. More recently, we've, we've uh, been at the forefront of trying to uh, work with neurology to try and prevent uh, recurrent strokes in patients who may have an arrhythmia issue. So we have uh, uh, put in these implantable loop recorders that we can put in in the office um, that can watch patients' heart rhythms for up to three years. We do this for a lot of reasons, patients who pass out unexpectedly, patients who have just occasional fast heartbeats, and also patients in this particular case who have had a stroke and we don't know why. Those can be the most challenging patients because it's very hard to let a patient go home and say, well, we don't know why you had a stroke and we don't know why you might have one again. At least this way we can monitor for a specific rhythm called atrial fibrillation, which oftentimes can cause a stroke and is very treatable if we are able to diagnose it. We're happy to say at KU we're able to provide a lot of these options for them and be able to talk through all of these specific options for them when they come into the hospital or come into the office to talk about their, their, their history and their medical problems. I would say the, one of the most transformative things in cardiology over the last decade has been the development of the transcatheter aortic valve replacement, which is an, simply stated is another way to replace your aortic valve in a minimally invasive fashion. Previously, a sternotomy, a full incision would have to be made uh, down the chest, and now we have the technology, and every year it's been getting better. But we have the technology to get access to the artery in the leg, take an aortic valve up to the, the existing aortic valve and replace it without making a big incision. Uh, and it's changed this procedure from a couple hours to literally in a, in a straightforward case, about an hour long procedure. Oftentimes we have patients up and walking that same day, that same evening. Um, hospital stays are cut to about half of what they were previously. Uh, and we're just getting started with this program. I would say, you know, on the horizon, certainly the future looks very bright. There are uh, several new drug classes that are coming out that uh, have the potential to really change the face of how we control cholesterol. Um, there's nothing that we have today in the office, but uh, really some exciting changes that are being brought forward.